Hi, it's finally time for us to look at different ports of the game, and the best place to start would be the original release of the game, which was on PlayStation 1. PlayStation 1 release still has a few unique features, which weren't, uh, which didn't reappear on other ports of the game, including the console ones. As you can see from here, the CGI cutscenes in the PlayStation 1 version were actually much better than the PC original release, although in lower resolution than on the Japanese re-release of the game in 2006. You can see there's no exit game thing because it's a console game, but there's game config. And it has unique music, it has some features which cannot be done on the PC. Uh, you cannot rebind keys as you want, but you can switch from aiming uh, aiming from auto to manual, something you cannot do on, on PC version without the patch of the Japanese version, and you cannot turn on the vibration on PC version as well. But you can rebind all the keys on PlayStation on, play on PC as you want. Reset, uh, Reset doesn't do anything unless you start the actual game. It's basically just uh, quit to the main menu feature. To use the Mercenaries bonus game and check the epilogues which you unlocked, you actually need to load a saved game which you do after you finish the game. And it, uh, to actually save any changes that you have, like unlock some stuff on Mercenaries or epilogues and stuff like that, you need to save the game again and use that same file. It has the same game config. Uh, and it has some things that I will be talking in a special video. There will be a separate video about the Mercenaries minigame because it's quite interesting. Unfortunately, if you exit the minigame or epilogues, it just drops you into the main menu and you need to reload the uh, save file again, which is kind of annoying. Now, the door to the boutique is locked. The door is not sealed, as it was saying on PC version and as it does on Dreamcast version. As I've shown you before, when you finish the game on PlayStation and GameCube versions, you actually get a special key, which looks similar to something you might have seen in PlayStation uh, in Resident Evil 2. This is a boutique key, and it unlocks that door that is completely sealed and inaccessible without using any cheats on play on PC and Dreamcast. So let's actually see how it looks and what it contains, but as you might guess, it actually contains the costumes, which are simply unlocked from the beginning on Dreamcast and PC versions of the game, hence that's why Boutique is not needed. Now note that you can enter the boutique only when uh, it's daytime, before you finish the RPD. After that the, the uh, door becomes permanently locked and you cannot enter it at all. When you enter the door you will see that it has a unique music and change of the costumes is actually done in a pretty nice way that kind of an enhanced version of what you've seen in the previous Resident Evil games. So, we've seen all the costumes and uh, all the stuff like this in a special video before, so I won't be uh, talking much about it. We've seen it all before. So just uh, enjoy the music and the special animations of how the costumes had changed.
What is unique to the console versions is the, uh, the ability to just pause the game. You can actually open the game config as well. On PC version of the game, if you open any of the config windows, it pauses the game, but it does work a bit differently. And uh, there's also a very unique thing to PlayStation version, is that when you meet Darian and when you uh, want him to exit the thing he bunkered up in, he has a, a special line that he doesn't say in other versions of the game. I told you! I'm not leaving! Never! Just get away from me! That final line you can hear only on PlayStation version of the game for some reason. It hasn't been... Uh, redone on other releases. Also, there are scan lines in some of the things that you can check. Like, for example, in here, the CRT monitor actually has scan lines. And uh, for some reason, other versions of the game don't have this uh, effect. But that's about it. GameCube version is uh, kind of a not very exciting re release. It's basically a PlayStation version of the game with some of the visual updates uh, which are not as good as, uh, as uh, on PC version of the game, especially the re-release. And uh, there are no unique features to it uh, that were present like in the remake, which is a completely new different version of the game, or even in Resident Evil 2, which uh, allowed you to skip cutscenes. In Resident Evil 3 you can skip cutscenes from the start. So the most unique feature to the GameCube version is that the title calling was completely re-recorded and it now sounds differently, so for the Japanese version it sounds like this. Biohazard 3. And on the international version it sounds like this. So basically it sounds much closer to how Remake and Resident Evil 4 sound, but that's the most unique thing about GameCube version, so it's not very exciting. The Dreamcast version uh, is basically the same as PC version, but with few unique features. Uh, the VMU, uh, the thing that you might have seen if you've ever saw Dreamcast, a uh, special unit shows the health of the character, so you don't need to open the pause menu. And the other thing is that when you select uh, the costume at the start of the game, instead of just menus as on PC version, you actually see uh, the costumes themselves. So it's much nicer when you select the costume because you know how it looks like and you don't need to remember what special 1, special 2 means. Uh, unfortunately, it's not present on PC version in any way. And also, as I was talking, the last costume is actually slightly changed on Dreamcast version. On PC it has different colors. Other than that, we've actually seen pretty much everything that PC version has. Uh, the only thing that I haven't shown yet properly is the ability to skip all the door loading animations. You can skip them at any time by just pressing the map button. This is something I will be using during the last run, which will be the, just a special super fast bonus run of the game. But other than that, we've seen everything that uh, PC version has pretty much. And since we're done with this, let's just check uh, other stuff. Like, for example, what loot Nemesis drops during the game. When you start the new game, the pure new game, instead of the infinite ammo, the last drop from Nemesis is the assault rifle. So, on PlayStation version of the game, this is if you just start a new game without loading New Game Plus save file. And on PC, you actually need to delete a special file that shows that you've finished the game at least once. And since we've, we were playing in Japanese uh, during my second run, you didn't see these descriptions for the you know, special weapons and items that we get from Nemesis. So let's actually read the descriptions and uh, see how they work. And if it hasn't been apparent from before, if you combine all the first aid spray with the first aid box, if it doesn't have three, uh, you can actually stack it up. It always stacks up to three. 
which is really nice and saves space. Now let's check how the weapons reload and how you use them. So, as I was saying before in a special video, the only way to get uh, ammo clips for the assault rifle is to start the game in the easy mode or the light mode. Uh, this is the only way you can, you can get any ammo for assault rifle in all the other modes, in all the other ways. If you use up the ammo in assault rifle, that's it. You can't do anything. But in the easy mode, you actually get a clip. And because of that, we can see how the assault rifle reloads. Simple as that. Now let's check all the other weapons and all the other ways how it reloads. It's kind of a nice thing that in the original Resident Evil games, uh, even though the uh, backgrounds are actually pre-rendered, they're just drawings essentially and they don't exist, uh, all the walls are still made visible, well, technically they are invisible, but they still exist, so to speak, and because of that, the empty clips actually bounce off the walls and have uh, special physics to them, which is a really, really nice feature, which uh, is somehow missing in some of the modern games even. Mine thrower, as I was saying before, actually has a unique thing tied to its reload. We can use up to six mines in one room, uh, but after that, if you try to reload, a special thing happens. So we're empty and we cannot actually reload in real time. We need to go to the menu and reload manually. But when we try, a special thing happens. Unexploded mines will disappear. Now note it says disappear, not explode, and yes, they just disappear. So even if you've been standing near one, you won't get hurt. The mine will disappear, it won't explode in your face. And mine thrower, as I was saying again, uh, is the only weapon that hurts you. I'm hitting the wall at point-blank range and Jill is not getting hurt. That's because only mines from mine thrower can hurt you if you explode them too near, uh, near standing near the wall. Which works with both the usual mine thrower rounds and the um, uh, the infinite mine thrower rounds. Special weapons cannot be loaded with special ammo, which is a rather unfortunate thing, but still special weapons are good enough and they don't really need special uh, special ammo anyway. And this works for both Eagle and Western Custom. They can be reloaded in real time with the usual ammo, but you cannot load special ammo into them. So now let's check some things, some text and descriptions which I have still missed, unfortunately, or because they were just in Japanese so you couldn't read them. Uh, there will be a few more which I will show in the final final run, which will be a bonus run as I was saying, but this is the main stuff. And since we're here and seeing Carlos, let's actually see a special kind of cutscene that can appear if we don't look out of the window when he fights zombies. It's a bit different. Carlos! No! <sighs> R 
Relax. I'm not dead yet. Are you okay? I'm fine. Uh, that hero stuff is harder than it looks. There's yet another variation later on. I will show it in the next run. So what I'm showing here is that if you have the last second decision to actually not um, trigger uh, Carlos meeting in the newsroom, you can actually do it. Uh, he spawns when you enter the room where he's in. When the cutscene starts, then you meet Carlos there. But right before that, even if you've done everything apart from unlocking the basement in the restaurant, you can spawn him back in the restaurant. So I'm going back and I'm going to open the uh, basement lid in the restaurant and Carlos will be there, even though technically he can't be in two places at once. But that's just how the game works. What's that? I also wanted to show some bonus things like special spawns that you can get, where, uh, enemy spawns, like this carpet crawler's spawn where there are two crawling zombies and one line zombie. It's probably the easiest enemy configuration in the entire game and, and it looks kind of funny. Uh, but I rarely get it. Also here, usually hunters spawn, but sometimes the sliding moves spawn. And it's, it's a godsend, I mean, hunters are really dangerous in this room. But sliding worms, I mean, come on. And in here, the easiest configuration is a lot of zombies coming out from the swimming pool. Uh, it looks impressive and fun, and it's also the easiest way to deal with by either running away or just killing them all. And finally, I wanted to show you different ways how you can confront the helicopter. So, for the first time, let's see what happens if we try to fight the helicopter, but then decide to run away instead. You're still alive. Such persistence. Nikolai? Sorry, but there is no escape from here. Although I'm sure I'll miss you, it's time to say goodbye. You can either accept death with dignity or die with regret. It's entirely up to you. Jill, what happened? Carlos, Nikolai beat us to the chopper. I guess this is it then. But I don't want to die in a place like this. This isn't over yet. I'm not giving up, Jill. We still have a chance. So that was that. Let's see what happens if we actually select a different dialogue option uh, you know, when we're talking with Nikolai. Maybe something different happens, because in English, as you will see later, it actually try to, uh, means try to negotiate with Nikolai. So, how will that work? You're still alive. Such persistence. Nikolai? Sorry, but there is no escape from here. So, 
you want to get out of here alone. Is that your plan? I made certain not to be on the supervisor's side. Since I'll be the only one who knows what really happened, I'll have more fun when it comes to discussing my bonus. Then why kill me? I'm not on their payroll. They want to eliminate it for reasons of their own. The amount is modest, but there is a war to be played upon the confirmation of your death. Although I'm sure I'll miss you, it's time to say goodbye. You can either accept death with dignity or die with regret. It's entirely up to you. Jill, what happened? Carlos, Nikolai beat us to the chopper. I guess this is it then. But I don't want to die in a place like this. This isn't over yet. I'm not giving up, Jill. We still have a chance. And finally, one of them shows that what happens if we try to fight the helicopter with a handgun? With the original handgun that you get at the start of the game. Can you actually do that? Because you can see that I'm hitting the helicopter and uh, if you try different playthroughs you will see that if the weapon can hit the helicopter it can destroy technically the helicopter. But does handgun have enough firepower to stop it? It seems that I'm missing a lot, which can become quite a problem. Because there's actually a time limit in this fight, and if you not don't finish the fight before that, Nikolai just flies away, in the same way as if you try to escape. So technically if you're really good with shooting, maybe there's a chance that you can f fight him with a handgun, but usually just a waste of ammo and more importantly your health, so don't do it. 